Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the X Transbots Gravestone trailer that turns into Minasaur and a superfluous base. And I got this at Show Z. But I have a problem with the price, but I think it might be the best. So we're going to talk about this coming up. Let's take a look at the box and they're telling you up front this is your Minasaur. This is what takes to get a Minasaur. Flip it around, you can see this emblem and then flip the back and you can see this is the team in in uh, bot mode. Guess what? You're not going to see the team in bot mode in this video. So here you go. Now you see the team in bot mode in this video. You're going to see the combined mode. You're not going to see all the add-ons. That's for a future and there's the tech specs. I like the box. I think x Trans Boss does good with this. Let's talk about this trailer here. And I did have to put the x Trans Bots Motor Master, the $130 Motor Master, back into the alt mode for this. And I decided to because this one kind of needs it for the combined mode. And that's all I care about. With all combiners, that's pretty much what I care about. But looking at this thing, it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at this thing next to MP44. Now this is the KO and I put my KO into the alt mode because it's not painted and I think that the painted bot looks better. But anyway, this is the official trailer that comes with the MP44. And as you can see, the x Plus trailer is vastly bigger, taller, and a bit longer. Uh, not much longer, but a little bit longer. But if you see this, this thing looks way bigger and I think that's kind of true to the cartoon scale. So looking at this trailer, it does kind of roll really nice. It does plug into this. I'm going to show you that plug-in method. It plugs in via this thing here. So I'm going to unplug it. Arr. And we're going to see that there's things you can do with this. You can fold these pieces down and then you can fold this sort of up. And did we see all that? Anyway, you can have those pieces down. Now, Another thing is you could fold those pieces completely in or you can leave them back. Uh, it's kind of a whatever you want to do kind of thing. But if you want to, you can fold those pieces all the way into here. It's not a big deal. Uh, there's a lot of options for this if you want to use them. Looking at the side of the trailer, it looks really good. It looks like it should. And I'm, I'm, I'm using the stands here to show you how well they work. They work really well. This is a solid trailer and it makes me feel good about how solid the bot mode could possibly be. And then you get in here and kind of open this up. Now this is kind of a wanky thing here. And let's push this forward and you can see that this piece here, which eventually turns into the chest. I, I wondered from pictures like, why is this not all incorporated? Because this turns into the chest down the road. You can store every one of these vehicles in here, I think, and uh, the hands inside uh, move around. And so it's kind of a challenge. You gotta line everything up and you gotta line the hands up and you gotta do all that if you want this gimmick. But I think this is the only one that holds a car. So that's kind of a point that uh, like, like one point in the X Transbots direction. So here it is with the whole team. Now I gotta admit that this thing really does work well in the alt modes. I think the bot modes for my personal collection are too small. For other people that want to put them next to Autobots from the Takara, they're perfect. But for me, I felt like the Takara Autobots were too small, so I like the other ones for bot mode. For alt mode, these are great, these are fine, these all look good, and they fit in the trailer, and they look good as a team. So here this is next to the G1, and I have to say that it is pretty true to the G1, and I think that's something we all ask for along the way. And even this up, this piece here, like all this stuff, it's, it's right there. All right, so against my better judgment, and I'm going to put this thing into the superfluous base mode. I'm going to start, ah, turn this guy around and open this up and here we go and we're going to do a few things with this thing we need to untab these tabs here 
bottom side here, we, what we want to do is make some supports. So we're going to fold this to be a support. We're going to slide these up to be a support, which is all just for the base mode. And then this, I guess these slide out like that. Take down these doors. And this is kind of a pain. Now this is actually the chest piece right here. So we're going to disconnect in all of the ways that it disconnects. Uh, both of the legs failed on me, but we need to disconnect this, disconnect this, disconnect this, and then open this up. So let's go ahead and lift this other side up like so, and then flip this to the side. Right here, we gotta get this pulled down. That's tight. That's a good thing about X, well, good, bad thing about X transpots is how tight this stuff is. And on the other side, you're gonna disconnect it right here, more or less, and pull this down. Separate this section here, and it's, there's a lot of like moving, it's the X transbots tolerance issue, where you're moving stuff past stuff. And of course that is going to be an issue here. So we're gonna try to pull all of this down and make it flat. And then this is gonna fold out and flat and fold and flat. And then we're gonna have to move a whole lot of stuff around to make this look good. So this is connected into here. You have to disconnect it and then you have to fold it out. And then you're going to move these panel. This panel is gonna fold over. So this piece will all collapse into here and then it'll fold down and then we have to work on this head to get this piece out of the way so we can rotate this panel that the head is on and it's going to rotate and there's the x transpos clearance issue of it rotating to get it through this and we've got to work this around so that we can completely get this rotated around so Kind of a challenge. Uh, let me see if I can do this a little bit better way. Having it in this position, and then you can rotate this panel around, and then kind of move the head out of the way as you're rotating the panel to clear all that. And then this panel gets rotated around. Not fun. Did you expect it to be fun? All right, so let's fold this little piece here down. Let's go ahead and get the head in a, a downward rotation and we're going to move it around like this and then we're going to be able to put it into place ah, right here then we need to kind of fold this out and then fold this in and it's going to start working together so getting to this side, we need to kind of stretch this out, fold this in, fold that piece in, and this whole situation here is going to have to maneuver around. All right, so let's go ahead and fold this around, and then this around like this. Get this tucked underneath here. We're gonna need to take this piece around, twisting this. So, can we get that on camera? This twists around to form the top. Okay, now this is where this folds underneath and then you're gonna need to adjust all of this to work with it. And then this is gonna tap down and then this is gonna be right here to fold all the way around and we have that and so we're gonna have to work on all of this right here you kind of need to rotate this around all the way around and fold this over and then this is gonna fold underneath and give you some support so there's there, there, it it has some good points to it to give it some support in here and in order to finish it off you have to open up these flaps here and fold them out to kind of make bigger ramps and it the problem with this boat is it feels like an afterthought 
it doesn't really feel like it was planned so things don't truly 100 tab together in it but there it kind of goes let's open up these pieces here here it is in its base mode and you can toss a couple of of the cars on it here and one of them's driving off a ramp here or one of them sitting right here but again I, I think it's a waste of time i really think i would have rather had this thing a lot quicker a lot sooner not mess with this uh base mode at all whatsoever and not made this uh, a, a two hour long video but let's show why they did it because g1 had some sort of a mode that somewhat sort of matches this so there it goes all right so let's go ahead and get this thing into its bot mode let's remove g1 it was nice to have you need to untab a few tabs here as in here we need to flip this out and this needs to come flip back around like we had it and then this piece here we're going to have to undo everything we did with the head in the first place and I don't, I don't know this doesn't feel good to me the way this whole head armature works but we do need to flip it back in the way it was so I, th I think it's better to just go straight from trailer to bot because this can be a hassle and I'm, I'm just afraid something's gonna break there are some fragile pieces here that could possibly be a problem let's fold this back up so it goes all the way around there we go getting this head available from the side of course we need to make the arm look like an arm so that's going to be a thing just kind of fold that out and get this sort of uh, ready to be an arm in the future let's get this thing moved around here to this side and we're going to work on a few things here so from here this these panels should fold in. If I can get that on both sides, these panels should fold in. There's these inside pieces here that are gonna fold, double fold around. That just doesn't feel right. And there's that. It will do the same thing on the other side. Double fold that around. And, and I think that these should have been in place. Oh, they kind of rotate too. There we go. We can get these back in to their place here. Slide them in. Watch them go. And watch them tab in to place. So getting these arms situated here, uh, we've got to... Uh, basically, we want to make it look like yellow on the outside and gray on the inside. So we're going to fold this up. And this piece here needs to come out. And fill that gap it's a gap filler and then we're going to fold this around to here and tab it in fold this piece in and get it all to line up just right and tab it in there's a tab and a slot tab that in place sort of the same thing on this side and we're going to be working on getting this arm set up as an arm and unhinge this open this up fold this around fold out the little red piece here flip this to the back like that and it's going to tab in and then it's going to double hinge on its way into here and tabs in right there and then we can fold this around now there is a it does slide i don't know if i slid the other one i'll have to check that later but there we go with that so we got the arms sort of situated we're going to finish situating them later but all of the gray is going to be on the bottom and the red is going to be on the top of course for connecting this thing looking back at the back of this you do need to tab these in like so and oh, it feels like i got a bit of a clearance issue on that that's that's in and then we need to fold that piece down it's already gotten folded down so that we can do all this good stuff 
we're going to fold this piece up right here and we need to clear all that so now we need to pull this piece down and it's going to well we got to get these parts here aligned and this is going to tab into here and here so we got to get that worked out just right that it tabs in just right so now we need to swing this whole assembly around here and we're going to kind of have to lift the head up to clear this as we're swinging it around and that and then we're going to tab this into here and we're going to tuck the head down in here as we finish this with the clearance and then we can fold this to the back to get all that on the camera goodness goodness and then we're going to move the arm out of the way a bit here so we have to put all this stuff into place so all this business here you're going to have to kind of double hinge flip this around as you're going up you're going to tab this tab into here and then tabs into there and then fold this it's a lot of double hinging going on right here. This tabs right in like this, but it kind of like needs a little wiggle to get into place. There it is. Now we're gonna take this little piece here out. Now we've got everything kind of aligned and we're gonna have to make sure it's lined up just right to go into that hole. And then once it's in there, you lock it. It's a little locking mechanism and all of this good stuff and then we're going to pull the rest of this arm bit around and lock that in and lock it in place this is what's really going to hold this piece together right here is locking this in right like that so we're repeating all the same processes on the other side, but we need to make sure we have this other open end piece tabbed in right there. And then we need to get Minosaur's head in place. Pretty much. Get tabbed in right like that. And then, of course, we can turn around. We can save that big reveal for later. Get this situated for now. Do we kind of get the arms in the correct position? Like so. And then we can start working on the legs. So down here at the leg area, we need to start untabbing all of this stuff here and getting it opened up and split this. Now, I kind of pre-split that, so that's, uh, that's a little bit of cheating there, isn't it? But I did it, so anyway. Uh, got this up, and we're going to bring this out. Untab this tab here. So that we can lift this foot piece out same thing on the other side so obviously we are going to do the legs and then we're going to lift the pieces up like so come around to the back here we need to rotate these pieces here and then disconnect this to get the rest of it disconnected uh, there we go we can continue rotating these get that out of the way and done and then we're going to need to rotate the waist this is the waist what a waist and it's it's tight it kind of looks like a mess but we're folding this piece here around and then we're going to rotate around the waist to bring it around so it looks right all this up i'm working out more on the legs we're going to separate this we're going to fold the legs down and just kind of you're starting to see it's looking like some legs here so this is going to need to fold up this piece here folds out like this like this and then get this in place and we're going to have this double hinge here pull that around and make the thigh then we're going to work on the leg now working on the leg piece here try to get a good angle of this leg piece 
Okay, this is gonna be a lot of fun. All right, we have to let's keep this a bit open. This flips around. This other one here flips around like so. Also. Tabs down. Guess I'm looking at it from the wrong angle here. This goes into here. Form that correctly. And then rock this into place. that one into place and then they'll tab in in the corresponding slots connect the waist we got to get all of these hip skirts out right here and right here and fold this out hip skirt in place so it looks good and then we got to work on this now this chest piece keeps flopping around but can get that in place and then we have to connect all this let me Basically, you want to push this down onto here and then get it in place. But you got to be careful on how you press it and stuff's coming untabbed while I do this. So, anyway. So, you're basically tabbing this long tab and that into those slots. And you got to just get them in there and tab them in good. Okay, so before we get Motormaster in there and all that, we're going to need to turn his head around and then... We get this piece here out. I already did this side, but uh, you can use this in the back as a guide and slide it. So sliding it in the front and in the back at the same time is kind of what I think is the best way to do it. Then you flip on this piece here to get it to come out. And then you have to make it level just like so. There it is. And then let's go ahead and start getting Motormaster put in there. And I didn't quite do the side flaps yet because I was kind of waiting to get Motormaster in there before I did this. But you're going to pull this out. You're going to slide it down. And have that in place so that you can put that in when you get the Motormaster in there. Same thing on the other side. Pull this out, rotate it around, had that out of frame a bit. So this is going to tab into here when the time comes. So anyway, oh, let's get all this stuff here out of the way. We are going to disconnect these pieces going backwards like we did before. Unhook this. I guess I could stay in there. And then we're going to unhook the other side with a tab piece. And this is going to take the head with it. So you got to be kind of careful clearing all this with the head piece. And then now we're going to start deconstructing it again, which kind of feels like a, like a waste, but anyway, put these pieces already out, open this, bring them out and slide them down, open this, bring it out and slide it down. And Motormaster is going to look something like this. We're going to slide it in here. Once he's in, we got to reconnect all of this good stuff the same way we did before. And then come around here to the back and we have to open these panels back up and we're going to fold them down 
and tab this in. Tabs in somewhere around here. Blind leading the blind there. And we need to reconnect these pieces right here. Or for these feet, we need to pull these out. And then start spreading the feet on the sliders. And then pull these pieces here out. Fold them around. Give it some stability. Boom, boom, done. So I kind of like how these go on here, how they put the cars on the legs here. And so basically what you do is uh, there's going to be like a rectangle piece here. And that was a round piece, but you just put them in and you got to put the cars in upside down. I actually film a lot of footage with this in wrong, but anyhow, you sort of put them in, sort of get them tabbed into place here. And, uh, and this one here doesn't hold in as well as that one, but uh, get them in like this, get them tabbed in, that's how you do it. For the arms, you kind of slide them in. Uh, there was a spring mechanism, it's really tight. I'm having actually trouble getting them back out. I just popped it in to make sure I was popping it in right, and you just slide it in. You basically slide it in like that, and it, it holds really, really well, so. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next bit here. This is going to be the bottom and we're going to connect this. So let's get this working like that. And then clamp this piece on. So this piece is going to slot onto here. You can kind of see the gray peeking through as you're slotting it into place. But uh, I guess you have to have this in first. This piece goes into the hole first and then you slot them into place so it holds nice and tight and then we're gonna put this in here there's two holes in the very bottom of that exhaust and then that's gonna go into place and then this tab here is going to lock it into place and I guess we'll say we're done so here he is. I think he's a nice looking version of Minasaur. Looks pretty good. I'm trying to get as much light on him as I can here. But uh, I feel like he looks really good except for the fact that he's not super stable. I feel like uh, the DX9 kind of spoiled me because that thing is solid as rock. And this is a little bit fiddly. And the reason it's fiddly is because there are so many pieces that move on this thing to transform it. So it's just not really possible for this to be quite as solid as the DX9, which is, it's got like half the steps. But anyway, uh, but looking at it, uh, was it worth all of that work to get into this mode? And I don't feel like it was really worth all that, but I'm glad that it's in this mode now and it's gonna stay in this mode forever. So there it goes. Let's take a quick look at articulation on this guy. So head up and down and left and right. And I will have to get batteries in that head so we can see see that uh, light up eyes we do have a good amount of articulation in the arm goes out to the 90 the elbow joint we have the uh, let's see this thing here keeps sliding back but you have you actually kind of slide up and down too and you can move all around. It, it has quite a bit of range in the elbow considering how big it is and it has all these pieces connected to it I mean that's a pretty good elbow range uh, you do have the hand movement and you have one two joints three joints and there's they splay the fingers they would splay and they're solid like they don't feel like they're flopping around at all pretty solid it actually takes a bit of force to pose the fingers if you want to pose the fingers it's, it's really solid hands but of course it's so big you'd expect some solid hands out of it it does have a waist movement and okay you can get an ab crunch but the only way I can get an ab crunch is I end up disconnecting these pieces here, which I can't say I ever got them connected good in the first place, but that's the way you would get an ab crunch. I'm not going to mess with it because I'm having so much trouble just keeping those in place. Now for the legs, now let's go ahead and go with this one here. Flip out the back skirt. It, not ratcheted, it's friction. Uh, front and and it's really strong. 
friction. It goes almost to the 90 front and back. All the way up to the 90 there. Wow. Uh, strong, strong joints on friction joints. I don't know how long those will hold up though. And I feel like that might make it a little bit less sturdy than if they would have used some ratchets in it. All right, here's this big old gun and it'll just tab right in his hand like so. And so here he is all weaponized up and looking good. He's got his eyes glowing. I used three like real small batteries, uh, just whatever I had laying around. And here's another head sculpt, a yelling head sculpt if that's something you want. But let's get them compared to a few things real fast. The first comparison, of course, needs to be good old DX9. So here is next to the DX9 version. And so the difference between the two of these, I do think that the X Transbots one is a little bit better painted. I think the X Transbots one has a little bit more uh, to it. Like if you're looking, you can see it kind of went with the yellow and the red that's incorporated into the actual trailer instead of just adding it on there but look at them side by side which one's better well the one thing i don't like about dx9 is the giant lower legs but i know that that actually makes for for quite a simple transformation and it adds to some of the stability of it it is way more stable in my opinion than the x transfer so so looking at them side by side though either one would be great on your shelf so Depending on where you're at or what you're working on, whichever set you're putting together, I would I would suggest either one of these as your Minasaur because I think they both look good. I don't really have a favorite yet. Maybe in a week after looking at them for about a week, I'll change my mind. But the other thing about looking at these guys here is that you do notice the hip flaps on this guy are different. I think X Transbots did a better job on the hip flaps. When it comes to the face, I, I like shiny things, but x Transbot's face looks more tune accurate, so it's kind of a give and a take all the way over. Kind of what do you think? Here they both are next to a G1, and they definitely destroy the original G1. They are massive. Both of them are massive compared to the original G1. Here he is next to his Nemesis Superion. This is the Zeta Superion, and I think these two look really good together side by side. Height to height, they match up really well. Very good looking pair right here to go up against each other, of course. Here he is next to Megatron, of course, so you can see the scale and just how big he is. The MP36 mold. Yes, this dude is big. Uh, I don't, but I don't know. I don't think they actually added any height to it because it was, it looks like it's still a centimeter shorter than DX9, right? So this has been the X trans bots minasaur trailer and being able to combine the minasaur and all that good stuff i have to say he does look pretty good i have to say that the transformation is a bit of a bear uh so that's where i think the 200 dollars comes in is the fact that yeah it's 200 bucks because of all of the engineering they put into this thing they could have simplified it and they could have saved me some money and saved me some time and effort but at the end of the day, they wanted to make the best looking one. It does look really good. It does look pretty tuned. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad I got it. But is it the best one out there? I don't know. I've got, we haven't seen fans toys yet, so we can't tell. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the Hanger out.